Okay, so let's start with FEM. So find element method. And let's start with a concept. The concept is the following, like we've been discussing the find volume method and we needed to assume that the values of the field function are represented uh, at the centroids of the cells. Uh, and we needed to we need to develop many, many interpolations to, to calculate the values at the interfaces, to try to, to try to represent the gradients in any way. Like fine volume method needed to have many, many assumptions. The good information about the fine volume method was that the scheme is conservative in its formulation. Uh, but right now there are the defined element method has much better mathematical foundations than the defined volume method has. Uh, the, I, I will start with the intuitive understanding of the defined element method. Then we will quickly move to the mathematical formulation. The intuitive way is let's imagine that we've got some domain And we subdivide the domain. Uh, into some subdomains. And let's depict one of the subdomains. Let's depict the nodes, the vertices. And the intuitive idea behind the find element method is, okay, if we needed to make so many assumptions about the location of the uh, function values in the find, find volume method, why not to start constructing something that we already have some very, very clear representation of the function everywhere everywhere inside of this subdomain. So let's assume that we've got some element, might also be triangular, and let's assume that we exactly know the values of a function at the nodes. And let's assume that we have some well-defined interpolation functions that tell us how the field how the field looks like at every location inside of the domain. Uh, so first of all, let me write that u of x, y would be, well, for this element, would be nothing else like having the value at node i times some function that spans, that, that tells you how, how the value of U1 is propagated inside of the of the element. Clear or not? The one D case, the one D case, imagine that we need to we want to construct the linear find element discretization. This would be our find element. We've got some value here, some value here. What we would expect in the linear case is that our function is represented by linear interpolation everywhere uh, between the points. So how can, we, how can we fulfill that? Well, we can fulfill it by saying that, okay, we've got one function that if you've got value of one at that node, then it spans such an interpolation 
the other associated with the other node spans such an approximation. So basically, if you take the value at the left node times such a function plus the value at the other node times uh, the value of the other node times this function, and what you end up with is the linear interpolation between this value and that value. The nice feature, the nice property, is that we really know the value of u at every location along x. Okay? So that's, I would say, the intuitive idea behind find elements. How is this called? Exactly. Shape functions. These are the shape functions. These are the values of the nodes. We already know how the, how the field approximation is built. Mm. So right now, let me move to our famous transport equation. And let me do the following, namely, let's start with the differential equation uh, A times gradient of U equals diffusivity, that's U, plus F, okay? And how did we how did we derive the find volume method? We integrated it over cell. Exactly. We have integrated this equation over cells, over the cell area, uh, and computed the fluxes. Now we are going to do something different. Namely, we want to say, okay, let's multiply it by any arbitrary function v. Like, if you've got the equation, you can multiply it by anything. If you apply the same operation to both sides of the equation, then the equation should still hold. So let's do it. Uh, times v equals nu Laplacian of u times v plus f times v. 